whiff of this and I went, oh. <laughs> That is clear your sinuses. That is Penang curry paste, which I got down the street from you guys. Um, 99 Ranch Market, one of the best Asian grocery stores in San Diego. Wait, is this, why is my mouth, am I, can I introduce you while I like stop talking about the paste? Oh my word. He's known for his sharp wit as a food critic, but let's uh, test his knife skills. We're going to find out tonight on Food Super Chef Grudge Match. Troy Johnson joining us uh, in the kitchen. Okay, back to the curry. Okay. So this is one of my favorite things to do, and it's so easy. You guys can do it at home too, right? You can get a pre-made paste, uh, Penang curry paste. Penang is one of my favorite curries. Okay, but ever. is this spicy or sour? Oh, it's super spicy. Oh, it's spicy. Yeah, so you, gotta, okay. you have to chill it out by okay. putting some coconut cream and some coconut milk into a simmer over here, oh, right? Is that what and you, you basically did? mix that up. So you're going to get spicy. You're going to get creamy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. Okay. I'm going to add some brown sugar to sweeten it up a little bit. Usually you would use palm sugar in a Penang curry. Why? Um, because it's just a traditional. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. It's got a little bit of a lower glycemic index, but okay. you're basically going to put some sugar in there, get some sweetness going. Okay, okay. And then you're going to do oh, this. It smells this. so good in here. Wait, you want to smell that? the worst thing you've ever smelled? No, right? no, no. <laughs> Wait, I know what that is. Is that fish sauce? That's fish, fish sauce. sauce yeah. Oh, fish sauce it's is, so good. It is so good. Okay. I mean, it's an alternative um, form of salt, yes. and it's one of the bases of like of good cooking. The Romans did it, the Chinese did it. I mean, you're basically letting um, fish ferment over time, and it yeah, develops so good. It brings so much flavor. Ultimate umami. So you throw a little bit in here, with a okay. little bit of sugar. You got your coconut cream, you got your coconut milk, um, panang curry paste, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it in a Mexican street corn. Now this is just all you have to do is put this into a pan with a little bit of oil, salt, okay, and you're basically going to grill it up. You can char it on your your grill as well. And then I'm gonna put all that bowl, I'm gonna put the Penang curry on it, we're gonna get some basil, we're gonna do some lime, and you're gonna have it, Penang curry street corn. So this is like a side dish? It's it's a side dish, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, if you're hungry enough, you can eat it, you know, just crush <laughs> a bunch of corn. We're hungry enough, we'll crush, mm -hmm. crush all of it. Speaking of crushing, it's Super Chef Grudge Match. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about this. For anybody that may not know what this is about, what is it? <laughs> so basically, I've been at Guy's Grocery Games on Food Network for 10 years. Yes. And there's a few of us judges that have been on um, that long. Okay. Okay. Right? And one of them is Catherine McCord. She's been on since day one with me. And we kind of like, fight for lines, right? We fight for airtime. You fight for to come up with the best saying about the food. Um, and so we have a little bit of a grudge. And so our friend, Darnell here, yes. is going to invite us tonight at 9 p.m. He invites us in there and we get to cook one dish up against one another. She challenged me because she said, look, I know you're a food critic and I've been studying food for 16 years, but she says, I don't know if you can actually cook and I don't know if you deserve to be on That's the judges true. table. Can food critics really cook? I know. Just, how did you nail that job? Like, that's like <laughs> a dream job. You know what? Honestly, I lost a job. That's how I did it. You lost a job so, and then you became a food critic? I was on the local Fox in San Diego. I had an underground music show. We had Maroon 5's first ever television performance was in East. Fox in San Diego yeah, here? Yeah. This was like 27 years ago, 400 years ago or something like that. Uh, but we had Brandy Carlisle, we had TV on the radio, we had Maroon 5, and then the economy collapsed and I had to take a job writing about food. I took it a job at a very fancy magazine with skinny women who needed food on the cover. And so I didn't want to write about food. I thought writing about food was for rich people um, sitting around like an Aspen timeshare in soft sweaters talking about microgreens. <laughs> and so I studied it and I studied it and I studied it and eventually... Yes? Eventually, I learned what I was doing. I realized that food is really just the way that you learn about cultures. You learn about history, science, it's religion. It's not the truth. You know, I mean, it's not pretentious whatsoever. You can learn everything about a culture through a single dish of food. Like, for instance, birria, which is the biggest rage right now, right? Birria? Birria. Birria. Uh -huh. Where's it from? Why is that? Why now, that's from Mexico, but what happened yes. was this, when the Spaniards came on over, yes. they brought goats, and those goats ate all the locals' um, food. So what do you do with a goat that's eating your family's food? You slow cook that thing underground with a few spices. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. I'll stick with the corn. You're just too cute. You can't make me do that. Wow, All look right. at this. All right, so this is, and we just got some basil. I got a little bit of Thai basil. I got some sweet basil. Kind of mix that up just a little bit for God, color and this show. This looks really good. It's not bad. Well, we'll see. I mean, the, the, the proof is in the pudding, right? Okay, so we got that. Yep. And now we got to do some limes because you need some acidity. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. I'm making my mouth water on so I know, many different I know. So anyway, when I cooked yeah. tonight yeah. in this competition, yeah. right, mm -hmm. um, I hadn't cooked for a year and a half because my wife and I took over San Diego Magazine and had a baby at the same time. I was like a marathon <laughs> runner. I would pass the pantry and I would just open up a soup can, not even heat it up. <gasps> I, know, I know that feeling. You know, so they called me and they said, look, Troy, you got to come out of retirement. You got to, you know, brush off your knives okay. and see if you can cook against Catherine McCord. And, uh, you can't tell us what happened? I cannot we tell you watch. what happens. I mean, I'll tell you, I passed out at one point. You know, I was a little bit nervous, that's for sure. I um, can't wait to see it. Okay. These, these cooking shows are really fun, like these grudgy, competition-y <laughs> cooking shows. And it, it is so crazy. Nine o'clock tonight? Is Nine o'clock right? tonight okay, on Food Network. So can I be your food critic now? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> yep, except <laughs> I haven't actually tasted my own product yet. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh man, you know how I cook. Oh, that's pretty good. You know, oh, 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 you can't just get that. <laughs> spicy. It's spicy. We'll be right back. You're awesome. Oh.